I thought about the drought and I prayed briefly and now look it's pouring rain pouring 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 not very boring <laughs> the birds are getting wet in the trees it's coming down you see as you can see on the street Yeah, there it is. Real, real water. Lightning. Oh, yeah. Lightning in the sky. Feels refreshing, huh? Shower's a blessing. Everybody's crying. Oh, there's no rain. It's drought. Look at not, not, not today. This just started about 10 minutes ago. Awesome. Rain, rain, rain. You're very welcome. It clears the dust out of the air. It, what else does it do? Cleans the streets. And what is the crops, more importantly, right? See that thick cloud cover? It's like... Yeah, man. Real rain. Sons and daughters. Raining cats and dogs. Woo woo! Meow! A friend of mine just died, man of God, yesterday. I just saw it today. Thought, oh boy. He called me last week and I didn't call him back. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Too late now. I can't talk to him now. I have to talk to him later. He's gone. Can you imagine he called me? And I couldn't take the call, and I, I just wrote back, said, we'll talk real soon. And sure enough, a few days later, he's gone to heaven. He snuck out before he can talk to the prophet again. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's happened a few times. You know, they sneak away, these, these great men, they sneak out. He was an apostle, but he changed his tune, and I didn't like what he, was, what he got into. But he was a good man, good friend, very genuine cat. So he's in heaven now. You know, I never think like earth is lost, uh, but heaven has gained a gem. I think that's one of the stupidest things you ever heard. What in heaven? In heaven there's enough of every kind of good thing going on. You got the four and twenty elders, you got all the millions of saints, you got the angels, you got... what? Well, they, they don't need anybody. The problem is on the earth. And another point I want to say, it's a little bit cheeky, but don't ever change your posture and doctrine. You know, some people think, oh, they say they were wrong. You know, a couple of guys have done that. And they lose everything. There's a few of them. A few, few in America, a few other places, a few in Europe. I can think of about two main ones in Europe. He was one of them. And uh, another guy in Europe who had a big, great revival. And then he, he, uh, he uh, changed to something else and just went off the scene. And the guy that had 8,000 every Sunday now is about 300 people in his church on Sunday after changing his doctrine to some gospel of grace or whatever. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, bro. You were on point when you were dealing with prosperity now. Mm. And this other guy, too, same thing. Big in prosperity, faith, the word of faith, the whole thing. Changed it all to go into something else. Hope of glory or some strange, something like that, you know. And then it's not about all this. What do they say? It's not about all this, uh, I don't know, you know, prosperity and faith and all that. I said, yeah, it is. Uh, we were even going to work together at one time, and he crashed his car. We were driving into a hotel to put on a meeting. He backed into a pillar and nearly wrecked his Mercedes. And I thought that was a sign. We never did do anything after that. We were just going to book a ballroom. He says, you're the prophet. I want you to prophesy and speak in this meeting. The meeting never happened, and that was many, many, many years ago. But we stayed in touch. He was a real, not so much really, but he was a very kind Loving guy, very personable, very charming. A lot of people loved him. 
Now, of course, the outpouring of, you know, praise God, you know, whatever. But he's gone. I even told him one time. Listen, I don't know why I'm getting into this. I even told him one time. I said, hey, why don't you. There's another lightning bolt. Why don't you get young men of God, um, younger men of God and teach them everything you knew, what you learned to build that big church you, that you built? Yeah, the, he had the leading cutting-edge church. Had famous preachers from America come who were mostly in the prosperity camp, you know, and then he renounced it all. Then he got deceived by another guy. He ripped him off. He lost his building. They always, and the guy in Amer another guy in America did that. Changed his whole thing. Had a big, huge ministry. Changed his whole thing that he didn't believe in hell and uh, the inclusivity inclusivity message or whatever. And, you know, meaning everybody that, no matter what they do, if they're in sin, you know, and the illicit lifestyles or, you know, they're all saved anyway. Totally false doctrine, total deception. And everybody in the city, the major city that he was in, renounced him. He lost his building, he lost his church, he was foreclosed, he was kicked out, and he just became like a vagabond, you know, just living by himself with nobody left. I don't think that's good. Why am I getting into this? Stay in the course of faith, stay in the realm of prosperity, healing, miracles, prosperity, favor, you know, the glory, success, power. This is the real gospel. And the earth needs it. I want to get back to this. The earth needs people. Heaven doesn't need anybody. You get to heaven, it's like a, hopefully it's a promotion and a graduation and when it's time to go. But earth is the one that loses. See, but he never, he never flipped it back. So he didn't go very far. But now he's gone far to heaven. Good man. My, my dear brother, I love him. And I'm not saying names to be courteous, so don't ask me about the other guys either. I don't, you may be able to even be able to guess a few that I'm talking about. But I, it's not, I'm not here to name their names and call them out. It's not my job. In fact, what they built at one time was so magnanimous. It's a bit, it'd be a bit of a scary thing in my view to uh, ever criticize somebody like that, even if they've gone off. <laughs> Why? Because they were too powerful before. The hand of God, the favor of God was on him to such an umpteenth degree before. And I don't ever want to touch that. Even Saul, when he was crazy, David said, I don't want to touch the Lord's anointed. Saul was full of demons. <laughs> and he called him the Lord's anointed. Why? Because he was in the position of the king. So he didn't want to touch him. But now some men take a position unto themselves. Some bishops or whatever that are evil. You're not touching them when you slam them. Because they're dogs anyway. They're devils. There's no position to uh, be afraid of. But someone that built a great thing that at one time was anointed and powerful, ooh, you better leave them alone. And I'm not talking about these religious guys who built a denomination based on their, their greed. They can't even preach. You look at them now. They can't even preach. They have nothing to say. Dead. Idiotic. They get up to speak and it's like nonsense. They just talk nonsense. They talk about other people. They have nothing to say for themselves. I know one guy like that. Boy, he's gone to the grave. And the things he's done, the criminal that he is. He's around, by the way. Again, nameless. God knows. God knows the name. <laughs> we know the name. We got it marked. Korandele Shari Ka'ati Shaya. Wasn't planning to do any message here. I just wanted to show the rain, but... Just got to give that little exhortation. I think my friend's passing triggered it. So everybody rise up, keep the faith, stay straight. And you know, I know some guys, people would even think it's a bit boring because they say, I'm preaching the same thing I preached 30 years ago. It was like, why don't you get a new message? Well, they said, no, this is the real one. But it's true, you know. <clears throat> it's true, it's the real one. The really one, as my friends and some friends in Africa would say with their accent, the Maasai accent, see that lightning? Wow, off in the, the really one, the really gospel, the real gospel. The real gospel is power. Re Revelation 5.12, Matthew 8.17, Acts 10.38, look up those scriptures. Those, that's the real gospel. 
power, Holy Ghost. Prosperity, favor, power, riches, wisdom, strength or might, blessing, glory, and honor. This is what the Lord said. He took back for us in Revelation 5.12. That is the doctrine of power. That is the real gospel. Isaiah 61 and 2, I was just looking at it. Arise and shine, for the glory is risen upon you. And it talks about then power. Coming, power, coming, power, 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 riches, wisdom. Amen. Power, riches, wisdom. Look at that. Is that weakness and grace versus the law, inclusivity, some religious, spiritual thing as opposed to the power of the doctrine of the word of God? Nope. So stay straight, people. Walk in power. The world needs you. The world needs it. The world needs the power of the Holy Ghost. And this place here needs rain. And it has come. This is a sign. So God bless you. Love you. I had a milestone day. I won't tell details. It was pretty brutal. Pretty good. Pretty good result. Something important need, needed to be done. And got it done. And Wow. So, you see that? Look at the clouds. Ooh. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. This is even a power manifestation when you see rain like this. An answer to prayer. We prophesy more rain is coming and the drought is ending in this land in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, be blessed. Talk to you on the next one.